Hey, I think we're live. I'm just going to invite Nikki in. Hello, everybody. So, how did I do this? Okay, I'm going live. Okay. Okay, Nikki, I think you have to send me a request. Invite to join. Okay, got it. Hey, people are streaming through. Hi, everybody. Can you guys tell me if you can hear me? <clears throat> Just type type in a message to say, say yes if you can hear me. Good. Thanks. Beautiful. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Isa. Um, I think we're early, so we're just waiting for Nikki to come in. Oh, Nikki says she's unable to join. Or it doesn't, it says Nikki is unable to join. Oh, she's waved. Hey, Nikki. Okay, I'm st I sent you a, a request. Go live with Nikki. Okay. Accept. Go live with Nikki. Still waiting. Maybe it takes a bit of time. Come on, Nikki, come on. We want to hear about doors, entrances. We want to hear about the energy of houses and what we can do to, oh. So now Nikki's unable to join again. Hmm. Okay, I view, I'm viewing this request. Go live with Nikki. Why isn't it working? <laughs> Why isn't it working? Hold on. Once again. Yeah, I've already invited her. I'm accepting. Okay, I know. Hi, Nikki. I know you're here, and I'm getting your accept. I'm I'm seeing that you are sending a request. I'm accepting your request, and I'm saying go live with Nikki. And then there is a a bottom piece note. Yeah, I can see the invite, Nikki. And at the bottom of the Instagram live, there is a message that comes in. Nikki is unable to join. Do you have some kind of a block on your account? Because, oh, I'm getting a call now from Panash. <laughs> okay, uh, everyone, we're just going to close up and I'm going to talk to Nikki. And uh, please hold your horses and we'll be, we'll be on again. Or I'm going to try one more time. I'm accepting your invite. 
Nikki Koopmans wants to be in this live vid video and I am going live with Nikki Koopmans. Doing that again. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Da -da 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 -da. So what was that? Do you know what I happened? don't know. I, no, I, oh, I okay. put in the request. Hold on. I have my microphone in, so I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can, can you speak, speak, Nikki? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I had this um, microphone in my phone, so I couldn't hear you, so I took it out. So it might be a bit echoey. Oh, okay. okay. Nikki, good morning. You made that happen. Good. Hey. So everyone who's joined, um, Nikki and I, uh, we decided to start a... Uh, hold on, we just, I'm getting all kinds of notifications. I have to turn those off, but um, we we decided to start a bi-monthly Instagram live talk. We have always so much to talk about, Nikki and I, about the energy of houses and properties uh, and how people can tap into these energies to, to amplify abundance, health, vitality, healing, consciousness, and as Nikki calls it, I love, I love her term, personal power place, how you can convert, uh, transform your home into your personal power place. And in these times during the pandemic, where some countries are in lockdown, um, we've all gone through it in some shape or form and are still going through it, uh, some of us you know, we're really awakening to our environments, I feel like, okay, where am I? You know, you're, 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 we've been at home a lot. We're all working from home now. Functions are now uh, distorting and transforming. And uh, there are so many layers now, right? Like my office, my office table is also being used by my eight-year-old son for his like after school homework and whatever. So it's like this like multi-use, multi-layered space. Um, so we're so excited about this, everybody. And, uh, you know, um, we want to share, spread the love, share our energy and, uh, and our insights through years of practicing geomancy, uh, practicing as I am an architect, I bridge spiritual wisdom with design and I work with the energetics of properties and mostly new projects, but also uh, renovations, restorations. And Nikki, uh, I, I, I'd like to pass the baton to you to introduce yourself, you know, as an opening to this talk, what you do, what are your gifts, uh, and, uh, and then we can dive into the conversation. Yeah, well, that is a lovely introduction <laughs> uh, after a rocky start. But uh, yeah, uh, well, my name is Nikki Koopmans, and I'm a house healer, geomancer, and energy worker. And I've been working with energy since my teenage years. And then I got on um, a dowsing course, and that was given by a geomancer. And that was also the first time I learned about the word geomancy. And that was actually describing everything that I already experienced because geomancy um, is a melting pot of experience, environment, and the place where you live. So everything all together um, is a certain energy. And uh, what I missed in uh, courses I did and trainings I did before was this element of environment. If you do a healing course, it's mostly focused on body and food and maybe uh, the things you wear, but not about events that are happening or the environment. So when I learned about geomancy, um, I got to uh, study that uh, deeper and deeper. And well, we're down the line about 25 years and there's still so much more to learn. So, um, yeah, and then I help people uh, who are not feeling at home in their own house um, find what is the core issue of that feeling and um, the place where you live, 
you can read as a mirror, a mirror of your soul, basically. So if you read the energies of your house or your property and you put that on top of the energies and your life story, you will always find some kind of resonancy. Mm. And if you have an insight in what that exactly is and you know how to describe that, then you have a choice whether or not to release that certain energy or not. So maybe it sounds all a bit complicated, but actually it's not. It is a whole process. And um, yeah, you need to dive into it if you are uh, up for the challenge, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so exciting. I love it. I love taking design and, you know, um, uh, what would you call, like, you know, space clearing, house healing, to this, to this level, uh, to this, um, uh, this new level of consciousness. I think we're all, many of us who are conscious beings, who love this earth, who want to heal this earth, are already very sensitive to, to energetics, uh, to energies. We're sensitive to what's going on in the collective. We're sensitive to what's going on all around the world. And we're sensitive to what's going on, the major shifts that are going on right now. And it's, you know, urging us to wake up. And, um, and I feel like, uh, I feel like this is the direction to be moving into, to become ever more aware of our souls unfolding. And our houses can be vehicles for that, right? Our houses can be yeah, vehicles exactly. for our unfolding. And um, yeah, so today, today we wanted we wanted to talk about um, one of the the simplest elements, or you know, uh, one of the the yeah the simplest elements in a house that could easily be uh, just walked through and forgotten about, or even not even thought about, or being conscious of, and this is the door doorways the front entrance to your home and i want to ask nikki about the world of doors right like the door the door to your home what is what's important about this in terms of energetics nikki what's important well, about the door the first most obvious thing to um get into that is realize what does a door do there is no way you can get into any room without an entrance and that's so easily overlooked you can't you cannot get into that sacred space without a door without an entrance so in geomancy and also maybe in feng shui um, you would say the main entrance of your house is the most important place because that is where you get in to that sacred space. And if you think about um, a house being like a body, then the main mm -hmm. entrance would be the mouth. And the mouth is kind of like a gatekeeper because the mouth mm -hmm. tastes your food it chews your food, it decides whether it's good or not, together with your nose, of course, and decides what gets in and what needs to stay out. So that's why the main entrance is the uh, main uh, influx point of energy, because it decides what goes in or not. So that's why it's really, really uh, an important uh, feature of uh, a house, mm -hmm. but also in a smaller place, maybe uh, a room. And in your experience, Nikki, working with clients, or even, I, lo I love some of your posts and how you observe the urban fabric, how you observe neighborhoods, how you observe houses, even, you know, some... I've, you know, you've had a lot of comments about certain front entrances of homes. 
in your in your research, in your observations, and in your experience uh, working one on one with clients, ha have there been do doorways, entrances, uh, whether they be the that are the main entrance to the house from the exterior, or even entrance ways into rooms as you're as you're now opening up? Uh, have you can you give the, us some examples of ones that are not working well and ones that are working well relative perhaps relative to a specific situation uh of on the property or you know a client any examples of one that's not working well for example a doorway i uh, have seen a lot of doorways that make me question uh, and I would love, but I don't do that, to ring the doorbell and, uh, and ask uh, why. Um, <laughs> if you look on my profile, there is a picture of a front door with a nice straight lane in front of it. And it's clear. Um, it looks nice. It is uh, well painted. But in front of it, there's this huge, huge rock that is blocking this um, narrow path up towards the door. So you can't what, go what, what the was the street. That was blocking it? What was the element again that was blocking the door? Blocking a huge the path? What was it? Rock. A rock. A big oh. stone. A rock. And then I'm wondering, okay, how are these people who live in this house how are they living their lives? I've seen entrances that uh, look like an entrance, but it's obvious it's not used. And when you, um, and you can see that it is blocked from the inside because from the inside it might be a wall. But because of exterior and all the committees that find that an old house needs to look like an old house, they cannot change the exterior of the house. But the inside is just a wall. So it's a fake entrance, so to say. And right. I have not have been with clients who have a situation like that, but I've seen it, uh, of course, in, in the streets. And I always wonder how are their lives running? Because if the main entrance is not the main entrance, the energy cannot come in. It needs to go on the side entrance or the back entrance. Um, how how does that play out in their lives? Because I do know that from people, I don't know in where you are living because you are living in Turkey right now and I live in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, we have a lot of houses with back doors and people hmm. are using sometimes the back door as a front door. Yeah, and in Canada, in the Netherlands, yeah. In Netherlands, the front door will open, when you open the door, it opens inwards, and the back door opens outwards. So you physically have to take a step back before you can enter inside. Uh -huh. And if we go back to, to the um, analogy of the body and the mouth, the back door would be the rear end, your anus. So it might be a possibility that if you always use the back door, your life could feel like you're swimming upstream all the time. That you always have to do the most difficult way because it's not in the natural flow how uh, a house should function. And, and that making... I have seen in, in, uh, in, with clients, yes. And then they start using the front door more consciousness, more, more conscious, more aware. And that's because they're conscious of it. That changes the flow in their life as well. I just love that, that it's a direct correlation of that there, that, that it's a, you know, these, these manifestations that we see in people's homes our homes as well, not people, I mean, our homes as well, um, that uh, it's a direct correlation. There's a direct correlation between how we are showing up in the world, 
how the person is showing up in the world, how the person is being in the world. I just love how you open doors, <laughs> how you open <laughs> doors in, of, of awareness uh, about that, Nikki. And so the back door then, you say that there's a lot of back doors in the Netherlands. So, and then the front gets interesting. Yeah, we see that a lot in Canada too. Like there's the back door. You know, there's also the mud room. You know, the mud room where you, you take off your boots and it's all muddy. And it's, so I'm thinking of, I, I was born and raised in Canada. And so, you know, thinking about the weather and the sloppy slush and the snow and, you know, you always just need a really well-designed mudroom, right? And a lot of people will use the mudroom or like the back or the side door for that purpose so that they can keep the front door pretty. But then you can yeah, tell. We have, we have. And then there's, two, there's always something I notice so much in Canada, and I'm, now I'm comparing it to being in Turkey because it's a totally different vibration here, totally different way of living. My, many more apartments, low rise, um, tight courtyards, tight entrances. Uh, anyway, it depends on where you live though. There are also houses in the countryside and more suburban type spaces. So, but going back to the the, the mud room and then the front door being the pretty, the pretty. Um, there are often these front porches in Canada and people will put two chairs on the front porch with the most beautiful pillows. Like, a, you know, of course not everybody, but I notice the people who are very particularly careful about their front doors. They want to make it look pretty but they're not using it. They're using the side door or the back door. The front door is to make things pretty and it's like a facade. It really is a facade. Mm -hmm. There's the two chairs. They never sit on the chairs. They never use the chairs. The pillows are always in the same spot. <laughs> Whereas in other neighborhoods, or even in Turkey, like the first moment there's a balcony or a front porch, everybody's using it, right? And people are talking to each other and, you know, tea is being, you're drinking outside. There's much more of an outdoor living room feeling in Turkey. The street is a living room, actually. The street is a part of a big family, right? Uh, but in Canada, I noticed that a lot. What do you think about that, Nikki? Like this, this the two chairs, the pillows and then you know and then not using the front door what would that how would that impact your life by not using the front door it could it could show up in your life as that you uh, are very sensitive to uh, status that you like to keep up appearances hmm that you don't want to, uh, I don't know if that expression also goes in English, but you don't want to show your dirty laundry. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, it does. It's, it's the it same could be. It is always, it could also, it could be showing up in any way, shape or form of that. Exactly, you know, you, you have all the means, but you don't use it. It could also show up as uh, not taking good care of yourself. You have it, but you don't use it. There could also be a certain kind of boundary or uh, right. an, um, uh, an energetic Safety or um, uh, phenomena that prevents you from using that space because it's uncomfortable. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the vibe coming in from the audience. Um, we have some comments coming in. Um, we have a facade, like that it would be a facade. We have someone coming in saying hiding things, stories from society, hiding things or stories from society. Yeah, um, we do welcome comments or questions as we are communicating. So, so please feel free to, to ask Nikki or I anything. 
For I'm working on a project. It's our home. It's our own home, and it is this concrete block building that I wasn't really present in designing the structure of. <laughs> and we've got two tiny homes that just came in recently. Uh, and we're parking it next to it. But there's something around the entrance of the main house, which will we, which we will be giving love to. And my intention is to bring a lot of life to this otherwise rigid dead structure. And right now, the entrance is is facing the west. And I'm not a, a feng shui master. I I work with or 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 even maybe not even use the word master, but I have not uh, studied deeply the, the feng shui. I've, I've just dipped into it, dipped my toes into it. And so I work mostly with tapping into uh, the energetics of the land, uh, working with the nature spirits, working with the genus loci, which is like the spirit of the city or the place, uh, the region, um, and and also really tuning into our family's needs and and how I want to receive the world or or receive guests or receive family into into this home. So Nikki, this the entrance is it feels very hidden. It's kind of tucked away. If I could just explain briefly, I'll draw it. I'll draw it. It just it feels hidden. It feels hidden. Uh, it's facing the mm -hmm. west. I'm just drawing something here. Okay, the garden is like this. It's really a tight property. It's really tight. So I'm going to be doing like mini, mini gardens, like mini, which I'm actually excited about. Um, Okay, the door is not there yet, but I'm just showing here. And that's the property line. Okay, and there's, a, there's an entrance here. So, Nikki, there's this, like, side street, which is not really a street. It's where we kind of park our car. It's this little pocket. And then we, yeah. there, would be, there would be a gateway, but right now that gate is not there, actually. It will, it will, be, a, it will be a wall of some kind. But right uh, yeah. now there is, wait, hold on. There's like a, a terrace, which I'm going to work on as well. But there is a terrace here. Uh, and it's concrete, yeah. so it's going to be work. But it's very, it's, it's here. So when you're mm -hmm. here on the street, it's so hidden. It's so hidden. It's facing west. There's big glass doors. There's big glass, like like openings here to the, the garden and the terrace. Actually, the garden is bigger. I didn't draw it proportionally well. It's more like this. The garden is actually like this, okay? But, you know, you would walk in somewhere, but it's feeling very hidden. And what, for me, intuitively, I wanted to add, intuitively, it didn't feel right. It doesn't feel right that it's hidden um and there's a comment coming in there must be a reason why you chose this house <laughs> maybe i'm yeah, there is a something. resonancy yeah it it's could be possible. perfectly okay uh if it's if it's hidden you know it's it's a it's a problem if you are a person and uh, we don't know each other uh, at that level yet if you want to have people all the time, every day, 24-7, in your house. Because then it wouldn't match up, because people wouldn't be able to find it. Right. And then, then there is something that, that, that could be um, a need for a fix. Right. But if it feels right, yeah. then I don't, see, I don't see a problem. Okay, I love it. I as love it. it as, as long as it's uh, clean and uh, the mailman knows where to yeah. put your mail and your friends that you do want to invite know how to find it I don't see a problem the problem is only when your uh, your wish or your family's wish is different 
than what happens in, in the world. Right. If, if you get every time you have a visitor, every time you get a phone call, I can't find it. I can't find What side of the house am I going to enter on? Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the house is a grounding point for me and my family. And it is not an intention to have people there all the time. That said, I do see that house and the house, the, the tiny houses behind the property, the outdoor spaces to be inviting uh, community in as a kind of cultural hub. I do, do feel that. But the inside of my home is really for my personal grounding and, and going inward. Yeah. And you do not live there right now. No, I don't so live there right now. So it might also change when you are actually there because you then are yeah. interacting and your whole family is interacting with the space more. And it might be different if you did some landscaping around it, you know, in a, maybe with a different kind of tile from the street to the really the entrance. You yeah. can also um, um, uh, guide the energy towards it, make yeah. it more or less inviting. Yeah, yeah. But I always, that's one of the first questions you ask is if, if uh, you have an entrance. Um, I think it is important to keep it clean and at least um, let the house know it's yours by putting up a name sign, my name sign. It's a really simple gesture, but a lot of people don't do it here. They don't have a name sign on their house. Yeah, and, and for, you see some people, it that. makes a huge difference. And even if you are living in one of these mm -hmm. uh, flats or apartment blocks that you only have and a main entrance downstairs, and then inside it's like a hotel. Yeah. Even there, also put a little sign of your name and the number or whatever uh, is customary in your uh, country. And so it has um, a direction. Mm, I love that. There's some there's some messages coming in from uh, EJ. I think it's. Uh, Edge is one of my my old architecture students. Actually, um, she's current. She's an architect and is working now uh, in in Scotland. Um, you were talking about something about the storage and stagnating. Aj, can you expand on that? And then there is also a comment coming in from Isu. Oh no, I see. Yeah, storage does stagnate indeed, but there are areas in your house where the stagnating energy is welcomed, huh? And uh, Aisu, are you speaking in general as a, can you expand on that? Is there any question that you have around that for, for Nikki or I, or any comment that you, that you want to share with the, with the community? Um, and, you know, just because there's some delay, we can continue with our conversation. But I love that, that the name sign is really important. Um, and that's something that people do less and less. I, I notice a lot more old people, again, more in Canada. Here it's less because of more of the apartment structure. But <clears throat> And in Turkey, people are very... Most of the time in the evenings, the curtains are closed on all of the inside mm -hmm. windows, always closed. Privacy, 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 privacy. Um, in Canada, though, I notice a lot that the older generation who are really about to, to die very soon, they have their, their name signs. And often there's a lot of uh, attention and care put into, let's say maybe it's like a wood carving, like the Smithsons or, you know, like the, the family name will be there. Um, uh, you know, the Jacobsons or the, I don't know why I'm saying sons, but, you know, right? But it is a way of grounding yourself to that hmm. place. Okay. And if, if we talk about doors, you know, we see a lot of, and you probably know a lot more about that than I do because you're an architect. We see a lot of um, in uh, houses with not a lot of rooms anymore. 
You know, the, the living room and the kitchen yeah, is just I'm one room. Concepts. Right. So there are no uh, boundaries, no clear boundaries in it. This is so And important. that could lead to, to uh, confusion. Not for everyone. It, it, it depends yeah. on your personality. But also with the, the huge glass uh, windows from uh, floor to ceiling mm -hmm. instead of halfway. It has an effect and not everybody is uh, suited for that kind of effect. When the environment comes in and uh, with such force with the energy through your window, even more than through the front door, not everybody is capable to handle that. Because when you're inside, because nature is so overwhelming, your attention will always go outside. And in your house, maybe, not everyone, your attention wants to be, you know, like you want with your family. You want to keep it inside. But if you ha then have a house that invites you to go out and look out, then there is a contradiction. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you could feel, end up feeling very unhappy. And you do not know what it is because you have this beautiful house with this beautiful view and everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something came up for me as you were speaking uh, with the very open houses that have no boundaries um, or delineation or you know you know walls uh, even. But, um, and and I love that you have that you take it to the level of well it depends on who it is what you what your goals are for your life what you desire your your character your type right what whatever that is and and the family structure but I can imagine that the very very open concept spaces and of course it depends on the size of it can be a bit exhausting for the very little the little ones the kids. Uh, I notice uh, when I'm designing, it can be, again, it depends on who those children are, of course, their souls. Uh, but I always notice that when I'm working with clients on their home, um, I have children, uh, I take a lot of care to create spaces that have like a, like a nook quality, a place where they have the option to hide, where they have the option to climb up and sit in a nook in a corner. It could be like a bunk bed or, you know, like a little tree house uh, or these little, these rooms that are these spaces just for them. And, uh, and they do often need the safety of those boundaries, especially when it comes to rhythms, like how, rhythms at home. Uh, it's, it's helpful then to say, okay, it's time to go to this space this space is defined to do this, this, and this, or, you know, whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, for a bedroom, for example, even, um, you know, what does the child want to sleep in the middle of the living room in this open concept space, or is it, you know, generally better that they feel safe and, you know, nestled within, within their bedroom. I mean, that's a very basic uh, example, but, for me, Nikki, when with the doors um, and the entrances, um, I, I'm I'm working very much with the with the energetics of form and what form does, how to create mm -hmm. forms that resonate with our humanity, with the temple within ourselves, um, even receiving forms from. Uh, recently, I've been receiving a lot of messages from um, being, <clears throat> beings in the cosmos and, uh, you know, or energetic beings that are bringing in blueprints, bringing in forms, bringing in new forms that can help us to make the next step into, into the new world. And really bringing it down, very simple, like these uh, simple yet very profound, um, you know, are all doorways good at a certain height, let's say 2.1 meters, 2.2 to 2.4 meters, you know, straight across, you know, rectangle, right? Straight across rectangle and this. Now, I always take a look at the height of the door. Uh, 
often doors are in North America and in Turkey, actually, I noticed that as well. They're too low. They're too low. And they are not, the forms are not helping um, our higher selves to pass through the threshold as well. Like other parts, expanded parts of ourselves or the other dimensions of ourselves to pass through that threshold. And so I invite everyone to imagine actually what, what shape and size and form of door would suit your energetics. So imagine it like a kind of footprint, door print, like a pattern. And I, I see when I envision doorways, I envision things that have like these, you know, like activators at the top of them, which are some kind of like, you know, um, metric uh, codes or patterns, almost like a key that like help the energetic body. It's like something that communicates with the energetic body and says, welcome, welcome. I recognize you. This is your space. This is your family space. Perhaps you can even embed the intentions that you have for your life and actually embed it like as decorative codes or something like that. So it's really like temple doors, right? You know, temple That's doors. That's what I have... wanted to say because you are, you are probably familiar with that as well. In uh, a lot of churches at the entrance, yeah. you have these step, uh, they're round entrances, but they're, I don't know what you call it. It's like the little stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even there are churches with, uh, entrances that are almost half our size and what it does energetically it it, it um, the, the, the imagery is like a shock so everything that is bad will be leaving your aura so you enter the church uh, sacred clean uh, yes so it's like yeah. a it will it will um, scrape everything that is not not supposed to be in your energy. It will take it out. It is kind of a ritual ritual entrance. That the same uh, function is these lions at the side of the entrance. Or little gargoyles or all different kinds of characters. All, all of that, yeah. So yes, and 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 you can do that. Uh, in your own house, very simple, with a post-it. Try it. Put a symbol that you really like, put it on the top of the door, and it will be like a blessing. Yeah. With the intention. And another yeah. thing I wanted to say, because you were talking about sizes, and I know there is probably a lot of regulations about standard sizes and doors and whatever you have to uh, take into account yeah but um, there is this really interesting experiment if you take your own height and you make uh, a golden ratio division of that piece of string or whatever it is you stand on that precise spot of that golden ratio and see what it does to your body and if you have uh, a partner or a, fr a friend with a different height, which has a different golden ratio uh, in absolute numbers, and you will feel the difference it will make. But do you talk about like your actual physical height, the feeling in your body when you're step? Can you explain? So you stand on the. What are we standing on? Can well, you explain it. Um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I just thought of it, so I didn't uh, relook at it how to do it exactly because my mathematics is not uh, uh, yeah. very, very good. But if you have, but if you have a length like a pen, a length, a certain kind of length, which is your height, holding it almost and at the golden ratio anyway. Yeah, and you, okay. and you divide it in the golden ratio, which is yeah. about this. Yes, so yeah. this thing. Yeah. And you stand on this point. 
it will make you feel more um, whole, I could say, mm. than if you stand next to it. And if you stand on the golden ratio of a different thing, like this one, it, which is the, the, the perfect resonancy for a different person, you will feel different and maybe even get images from that person could be. And if you do that with uh, doors or sizes of a room or whatever shape you are uh, willing to look at, you will feel a difference. Yeah. And I, I can it. only describe it as, um, yeah, feeling more whole, more at home, more at ease, um, less stress, um, all those kinds of things, more like a complete whole. Yeah. I love it. The so then I think you as an architect would have a challenge because, you know, um, you have to personalize a house for a family, but there's more than one member of a family. More yeah. often. It's a challenge. And it is. Some, it is. You, have, you have to probably skip her between what standards a house can be sold in the future and what's suitable for that particular family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I find... Yeah, it's a balance. There are spaces in a home and um, a home and a property because my work goes beyond the the walls of the of the building as well uh, into mm -hmm. the, the garden as well for the entire property um, to ensure it's important to ensure that there are spaces within that property that are really supporting the soul's purpose of each being of each being of that family. And then that there are spaces uh, where they can come together and be together. Um, but, you know, and it depends on who, who it is. But, you know, a, a, a friend of mine always even, you know, they, they were moving there. They were moving quite a bit to different homes. And it was always her top priority. She's a mother, two, two boys, that she has an extra room. So, that was always the top, you know, like no matter where they go, as long as they have, she has an extra room, which she can lock and put a note on the door saying it's, it's mom's time. It's mom's time. Right. And there, right. Yeah. So she knew there, she knew from a, you know, quite an early stage on to, to, to have those boundaries. Um, but there's so much more that, that it could be. Um, there are some people who prefer to be working outside, chopping wood, or, um, you know, always working in the garden, and that's their space. That's their, that's their soul space. Some people want to be in a tub outside and watching the stars, perhaps a cold tub like you, <laughs> freezing <laughs> ice, ice tub. So, um yeah, I love it. I love the, the, what, what opened up uh, in this conversation about doors. And uh, I invite everybody to, I love that you could start as simple as just putting a note on your door, uh, a symbol that you like, just what Nikki recommended, perhaps a writing. I mean, in, in Turkey, we have a lot of prayers that are put on the door. Maybe the evil eyes are, are hung on the door, right? Like the blue charm. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that. Now I'm going to even think about it because we're, we're in a flat right now. We're in an apartment and I can get creative with what's downstairs in the, in the front entrance. There's a garden there and uh, it's exciting. Am, and then, yeah, go ahead. On, on, on my front door, on the inside, uh, when I uh, moved out, I got a present from uh, a colleague of mine, a little uh, Fatima hand, hand of Fatima, for, uh, above the door. Oh, and it's been in every house. house. Yeah. And there's prayer and, in it. Yeah. There's and, 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 Okay. And um, uh, over the years, Sometimes when I was on vacation, I found a symbol 
So I have a small collection. I think it's uh, three, four or five different kinds of symbols coming from trips I made or people brought me that are blessings uh, above the door. So um, for me, it's like uh, this little shelf of uh, touristic uh, reminders, <laughs> but also people who thought of me. And yeah. it, uh, for me, it, I don't know how people uh, experience coming in uh, into my house. Because I have a really small hallway, like all the Dutch houses. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I've seen and heard of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for me, it makes me feel good. And that's what, what counts. Yeah. It makes me feel at home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel we're we're wrapping up here. How long have we been talking for? I don't know. 45 minutes? Well, 45 minutes? Perfect. Yeah, I feel like now the energy is ready to wrap up. And Nikki, it yeah. was so great. Uh, thanks for thanks for joining this week. And uh, and next week, no, uh, what is it? In two the weeks' week, in time. Two weeks. In two weeks' time, I'll be on your account and we're, we'll continue the converse, conversation about the energy of houses and properties. Yeah. And how they can, when you're aware of these energies, how they can bring much balance, grounding, alignment, abundance, health, vitality. It's like, because it's like, why? Why are we talking about this? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, yeah. and if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to discuss, please send us a DM and uh, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Nikki. It was great chatting. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. How do I leave? I think we have to uh, put the X. Maybe it's the X at the top. Bye-bye. Okay. I'll do that. Bye-bye. See ya.